get used pretty much. Simple, it's it's kind of like the human eye works, just on a whole lot bigger scale. Oh, f yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Rato Doroyu and I live in a camera obscura. It's something really interesting to explore. It's a vehicle to explore somebody's personality. Because when you go in somebody's room you see their stuff and it's a, it's a sort of personality transposition from the person to the room they inhabit. You manage to concentrate on somebody's personal space and be allowed there, which in itself is something special. Um, I think that photography is voyeuristic by default, so uh, it's just trying to be what, it, what it's always been, trying to observe the human nature and the human spaces that we inhabit. I used to stay in the room at the beginning and it was just interesting to see uh, how it affects me as being there because you was like the personal experience was quite important because you would um, the first time I tried this I, I did it in my own room and I stood there for two hours and a half and not moving I had to stay on a chair because anyway anyway if I moved anywhere I would cause shadows and alter the image so I had to stay for two hours in the same chair and I started thinking about the project and ideas and it, it's a very creative process. It's an odd experience because um, first you sleep a lot, or at least I do, because the room is just dark, but then it takes some time to realize what you see and uh, take some time your mind to adjust that that's the outside. And uh, it's always a weird experience. I mean, being in a camera obscura is just being weird, but I prefer to go in there, have a look and then come out again, because living in one all the time is um, oddly depressing, because it's dark. Visually, the most interesting was definitely a friend's place who lives uh, on the last floor of a block of flats and has a view of uh, a stadium and a huge park. And when we did it immediately, when I finished building the camera obscura and poked the hole through, we just went like, wow. Because you would see everything, everything. and. Because of the lenses, you could see the license plates from the cars that were parked really far away. So you have you have an incredible level of details. It's perfect. Of all the camera obscuras that I've built, most of the people were completely impressed. Although they have seen their room and they have seen the outside of their room as well, but they've never seen it overlap, which brings a new and fresh perspective to what they used to acknowledge as a personal space and a space they knew very well. It was always fascinating to see what, what would happen if you would have a tree in front of the room. And I did one at a friend of mine and I didn't actually know he had a tree in front of it because we were so busy building it, we forgot about the tree. And then we poked the hole through and everything turned green with leaves and it was really interesting and it defined his way of being which was quite, like, the tree outside kind of linked very well with his personality and the room, so... I conceptually, think I think that's the best one.
sunlight outside, but you never really get it on your own. And you're kind of a mole trapped inside of a black box, and you have this little hole the size of 5p, and that's the only source of light and the only way how you can see outside. Uh, for a long time I've been fascinated by it and I thought it would be an interesting thing to actually try and build and see if it works in reality. So after nine hours spent duct taping cardboard to my window and making holes in it, I finally managed to get what I was looking for, which is the simple camera obscura effect. The room changes a lot and at least color-wise everything becomes a very strange it's a very surreal space that, that has practically always been there it just n needed somebody to show it really Discovered if it, oh, this if you're supposed to be, have it round or if it's okay any size, oh, any shape. I'm guessing. But I usually make it as big as my finger, so that's the that's my point of reference. Right now, uh, oh. you can see the image on the oh yeah, there is yeah. already. Yeah. There we go. We have very little see, light, can, I'm surprised. You, you can see some images, some part of the image on the... Yeah. Do we need to try for this? Yeah. Huh? Oh. Mm -hmm. I think we could turn it a bit. Uh-huh. Turn the lamp a bit. More. A bit more. Oh, we can... So, yeah, this is the camera I, I generally use for this project. And it's a large format 4x5 camera, field camera. And it uses, oh, well, it's pretty much the, the principal, the first cameras. It uses plates such as these ones, which you put in, take the protection out, and take the picture. And it's, it, it works on the same principle as the camera obscura. So you can see um, it gives you everything that's outside reversed. Let me just sharpen it a bit. Thank you.